I read a bunch of comments in the last video where we took a TIG welder and turned it into a spot welder using kind of an old school trick. Now, a lot of people said that this is something new to them and that they learned something and they're going to definitely use it in the future on future projects. I thought that was really awesome. But after that, I received a lot of messages, a few emails, one of my students asked, and I read a couple of comments where people were curious if this will work on aluminum. Now, my initial answer to that question is always going to be no, and that's largely based on the characteristics of aluminum, the things that I know, and my experience working with it. But the fact of the matter is, I don't actually know for sure, because I've never tried it. So I figured, why don't we do what anybody else does when they don't have a definitive answer and figure it out for ourselves. I'm Justin. Welcome to Weld Coach. It's Weld Coach, your personal welding instructor, anywhere. Autogenous is the word used to describe a weld made without filler, but most people usually just call this fusion. Now, autogenous welds are simply made by tightly fitting two pieces together and bringing the amps up high enough to liquefy both edges where they combine and solidify. Autogenous tack welds are what most people see when someone TIG welding is holding the part to be welded with one hand and holding the TIG torch with the other hand because they don't have a third hand to add filler. It's a very common and effective method for tacking up parts. A spot weld like we did in the last video is technically autogenous because no filler was used. Heat was applied to the part in a central area which caused two tightly fitted pieces to combine which holds it all together. But if you have ever tried to autogenously weld aluminum, you probably know how incredibly difficult it is to do and how, if you are successful at it, you have to be so incredibly careful with your part afterwards. The reason why is because of two factors. The first is that in order to combine two pieces of metal, they both have to take a little piece away from themselves and give to the other. In other words, if piece A and piece B need to fuse together without adding anything, they both have to subtract a little bit from their thickness in order to combine. Subtracting from that thickness also subtracts from its overall strength. Now, if you factor in the restructuring of the material both in and around that joint itself, you could also say that it could become weaker or more brittle. The second issue we have is called hot cracking, which is kind of complicated, but to sum it up, pure aluminum sucks as a building material. So what we end up doing is mixing in a bunch of different elements to alloy that material to make it suck less as a building material. But alloying the material to make it stronger or better suited does not make it friendly to liquefying and solidifying quickly, which is what we do when attempting to autogenously tack it or stick it together without filler. Oh, look at that, already cracked. The filler itself is constructed of another specific alloy that, when mixed with the base material, creates a whole new alloy altogether at the joint, which is as strong and resists hot cracking. But it is because of that reason that the initial answer to my question about TIG welding or spot welding aluminum with the spot welding trick will always be no. However, I have never tried it before, so while I'm fairly certain that I'm correct on this, assuming that it won't work, we're going to find out together right now. And if I can prove that it does work, well, I just learned something new, and hopefully so did you. I'll be using the same relative thickness of aluminum as I did with the steel in the last video. These coupons are from WeldMetalsOnline.com, and they are also the same dimension as the last ones. I haven't welded anything since the last video, so my setup is still exactly the same. The only change I'm going to make here is switching from DC to AC. Now I don't know what my frequency or my balance is set to specifically, but I am going to assume it's somewhere near where I usually run it. If I think it's a problem, then we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, so I switched this camera over to full auto and the other one set up for an arc shot. This being my first time that I'm doing this, I want to collect as much data as possible. So this one over here should darken out and do a bunch of other crap or whatever that I usually don't like. And of course, I'll have the arc shot to show what's going on. So let's, uh, let's see what goes on here. I'm kind of really curious. I didn't see the bottom glow. Oh, I blew through it though. Okay. Well, let's just start with the obvious. I'm trying not to move this. Oh yeah, so that didn't work. It just, it just fell apart. Let's try again. Try not to move this so my arc shot stays in focus. Uh, less amps perhaps? Here, we'll go to some place a little bit, like this is really tight right here. Maybe a pedal pulse. It looks really weird under there. 
Okay. Okay, they're stuck together. We got a dimple. Okay, oh, yeah. Just fell right apart. Let's try again. Third time's a charm, perhaps, right? That's nice and tight right there. Maybe if I can get a better view on both the pieces, just a quick blast. That looks about the same. Okay, we're convex here, we're concave there. I don't know if I can control that. This is starting to get a little bit warm, but see they're stuck together. Yep. I mean, it kind of works, but it's, that's, compared to the last, the last video where I had the steel coupons trying to rip them apart, this one here, that was paper. That was, that was way too easy. One more, just to be thorough, right? You can never, you can never be too thorough, I suppose. Let's see if we can get a spot where it's really tight. Right about there, that's pretty friggin' tight. Maybe I can do it without getting it uh, convex, without it dimpling. How's that look? It's a little bit better. I don't think I went all the way through, though. It's hard to tell. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. I really hope when it's on auto, it shows this. This is gonna be, oh yeah, they just, they just fell apart. I think that answers it. You know what? I'm not satisfied with that. Let's, uh, let's see if we can answer this question with another two pieces, but this time, instead of trying to spot weld them with the spot welder trick, we'll add a drop of filler, kind of in the same fashion. I'm just gonna fire right down onto the top of it Add a drop of filler, see what happens. This is uh, also something I kind of want to know. Come on. We got a pool. Okay. Oh no, I missed. Okay, I got through one, it didn't go down into the second one. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. I'm not going to give up just yet. Let's go to an area. I know that these are tighter fit right here. Little pedal pulse maybe. Can't see the bottom and the top at the same time. So, oh no, it just warps it. Hmm. I don't think I got through. Oh, maybe I did. Ha, okay, I got through. <laughs> it just warped the crap out of it, all right? So here we go. Yeah, just pulled apart again. And you can see that the structure of this is just like cabbage. It looks terrible. Let's do one more for good measure. Ah, jeez. You know, I say that gloves are for, not for handling hot metal. And that's why, because now they're starting to get worn out. My pretty pink gloves. If you want to know the real reason why I wear pink gloves, uh, let me know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make a dedicated video or something for it. It's not what most people think. It's actually kind of a funny story. Okay, now I know that one went through because it, it sunk and I hit it with a little bit more filler. Okay, maybe it didn't. Uh, this is the last one anyway. No, it just, it's not going to work. I'm just going to call it right there. Okay, so experimentation via trial and error like we did here is a pretty quick and easy way to get an answer to a question or to figure something out. And before I get to the real reason why this spot welding trick cannot work on aluminum specifically, I should definitely mention that the fastest way to learn anything welding related is going to be by booking a one-on-one -on -one class over at weldcoach.com. On WeldCoach, you will get a real-life welding instructor on the other end of your device who can answer your questions directly. 
Every class is tailored to exactly what it is that you want to learn or need to know about. All the coaches at WildCoach.com are vetted and work in the industry, so you know that the training and the info you get is true and more accurate than reading, let's say, a Facebook group comment or waiting for another video to get published. And if you choose to, you can even book a class directly with me over at WildCoach.com. I teach as well. Okay, so the real reason why this spot welding trick cannot work on aluminum specifically is because of aluminum's most unique characteristic, which is called the oxide layer. The oxide layer forms automatically on every single piece of aluminum. In fact, that's what you're staring at when you're looking at a piece of aluminum. You're actually looking at the aluminum oxide. Now, if you would have watched the AC TIG theory video that we produced some time ago, you would know that the positive cycle of the AC TIG wave is responsible for breaking the oxide layer away so we can expose the core layer and get down into it and basically stick all of it together. But every single piece of aluminum, top and bottom, will be covered in aluminum oxide. So if we stack two pieces of metal together, we actually have three oxide layers that we have to find a way to break in order to stick all of this together. Now if we blow away through the top layer and we actually get through the bottom of the oxide layer of the top piece and we break into this one, there's no more material left. You would effectively have to blow a hole into this and then there's nothing left to stick them together. So the reason why these peeled apart so easily is we're basically peeling apart aluminum oxide which does not like to stick together. Now that is the most simplified version of how we can explain all of this, but you know, that's basically why you can't actually use the spot welding trick on aluminum specifically. Now it works on a lot of other different metals like we discovered before or showed you in the last video, but the answer at the end of the day, no. You can't use the spot welding trick on aluminum specifically. Now I should also mention that there are dedicated spot welding machines out there that do work specifically on aluminum and were designed to do that, but they are not TIG welders or TIG welding machines. They're again dedicated units for it so at the end of the day this scientifically cannot work with a TIG welder because reasons oxide layer that's basically it so I hope all of this information in this episode helps you out and if it has earned a subscription I thank you very much and I hope to uh, read some really awesome comments and stuff down in the uh, in the comments box down below there you know pump the algorithm all that other good stuff hope to see you guys over at weldcoach.com I love teaching so it's uh, you know if you want to learn something and that's the place to do it so uh, I guess that's an outro, so I'll uh, see you guys on the next episode, which I'm going to shoot right after this. Well, after my class, which I have, and I'm not wearing my watch, in probably about six or seven minutes, so I should probably get over there and teach. <laughs>